Some of you may have already seen this video. I uploaded it last week, but because of a copyright claim for some music that I bought off the internet, I actually paid for it so that I could get a royalty-free license so that I could legally use the music without copyright claims. Those of you watching Death by Bungie know that I do all of my own music for this channel. I write all the songs, record it all. Got a couple of albums out with my band, Yankee Militia. I'm very proud of that music. Love adding it to the videos here and I think it works really really well I've been struggling with getting the right volumes and fixing all that but I think I've got it under control and I'm learning as I go but I want to spice things up a little bit have a little broader catalog of music if at all possible and that's the reason I subscribe to this service so that I could actually add some of those songs in there to give it a little bit of different flavor now and then so you're not always just hearing the same songs nonetheless I got a copyright claim through YouTube ended up having to take that video down I actually contested the copyright claim and I probably would have won but in the meantime I'm sitting there with uh, without the rights to that video and rather than have that problem I just took down the video. I have re-edited this video. Unfortunately, because it was taken down, we lose all the comments and I really appreciated all the comments. I did interact with you and I did respond to all of those comments and unfortunately those are gone for good. So if you haven't seen this video, go ahead and watch it, enjoy it. It's got different music this time. I cleaned up the parts that had the music in it, took them out and, and just re-uploaded it. So we should be good to go. So enjoy this one and there's more coming, of course, down the road right here on Death by Bungie. Well, the 2017 to 2018 deer seasons, all of them have ended here in northeastern Pennsylvania. That includes the crossbow season, the second crossbow season, which is what I like to call the rifle season, as well as the uh, late crossbow season or the late flintlock muzzleloader season. That is also closed. I did go out on the last day of the late season here a week or so ago. It was awesome. I was so prepared for it, so excited for it, because the barometer was rising. I was looking at my phone, getting ready to go out, and the phone was showing that the barometer was rising. Every time I would look at the phone, it would be a little bit higher. It started at like 29.15, something like that. And before I knew it, it hit 30. By the time I got in the blind for the afternoon hunt over here behind me, that's my late season brassicas food plot. Got a little food plot over there, and that blind was set up. By the time I got in there, it was actually like 30.1. It was a perfect rising barometer, and I knew I was going to see deer. I was not disappointed. We saw deer for sure. Bungie and I sat there all afternoon. It was cold, okay? The temperature was down. It was down 10, 12 degrees. So you know that you don't have a lot of latitude as far as how long you can sit. I knew that I couldn't sit all that long. So I planned it all out. I got in there about two o'clock knowing that I could sit to five, 5.30, that'd be about three, three and a half hours. About all I can take when it's that cold. So hopefully you enjoyed that footage. I was hoping to have uh, the harvest of a deer on film. It didn't work out that way, but there is always next season. I actually came back yesterday with Genevieve after work, I came home and got her as soon as she got off the bus, got home from school. We went out and we set a couple of the raccoon traps, the dog proof traps, before it got dark. You gotta rush around late in the afternoons these days because the days are short. But the reason Genevieve and I set these traps on Friday afternoon is because I have limited time throughout the week whether you're working, you know, you're leaving, it's too early to go check them. The raccoons may not even even bend to them yet because I leave and it's close to sunrise. The other problem is you come home and it's almost dark. So I don't like to have those traps out during the week or at least have them set during the week. I'll leave the sets out, but I'll trip the trap so that it's not something that the raccoons are gonna get caught in or anything. So I set these things up on a Friday afternoon because that gives us two overnights where raccoons might find it. That gives us Friday night and Saturday night. We'll trip the traps on Sunday, reset them next Friday night, that sort of thing. So it gives me a few weekends. The last few years that I've done that, we've been successful getting a raccoon or two. One year we got three in a row on those traps. I only, if I can trap a couple of raccoons a year, I like doing that. And the reason I like doing it is keep those numbers down. Number one, that'll assure that you have more turkey eggs. And in theory, those raccoons, believe it or not, they will eat a fawn if they come across a newborn fawn. They can't catch a bigger fawn, but a newborn fawn they certainly will eat. So I like to keep those numbers down. Secondly, if you put out food for animals, for deer during the winter, raccoons will eat as much of it as they can. So I like to keep the numbers down for that reason as well. You're not gonna get rid of all the raccoons. Um, not with the amount of trapping that I do, that's for sure. 
and as I get rid of them, they always seem to come back. So I always, new ones move in, it's not a problem. There is no shortage of raccoons. And the other reason I like to trap them is because I do eat them. Um, one or two a year I think is awesome. I think everybody should have should eat a raccoon or two every year. Uh, if you cook those with sweet potatoes and brown sugar, they are phenomenal. So don't knock it till you tried it. Actually, for hundreds of years, it was a delicacy in the United States. From what I've read, when I was reading up on the recipes and stuff, uh, rest, they actually would uh, serve it in restaurants, like in New York City and stuff. So it's, it is a, and it was mostly a, a southern dish, but I'm telling you, until you've tried it, it actually is a really good, to me, it's like a, a more wild game flavor of pork. So that, that's what I would describe it as. So hopefully we can catch a couple of raccoons. If we catch one big enough, I'm gonna have a hat made, and I have, I'll have i do a video about that, about how we get the hat made. Um, I do not know how to skin, how to, I don't really know how to properly skin one of those animals, let alone uh, prepare the pelt for fur for uh, garments or anything like that. That's not my area of expertise for sure. So there are people who know how to do that though, and I'll show you how I'm gonna handle that if I am fortunate enough to catch a big boar or a big raccoon that's big enough to make a hat out of. But we went down and got those traps set up and we're gonna check those today. Okay, we made it down to the hemlocks where we set the traps up last night. The reason we do it clear down in the hemlocks instead of up by the house or anywhere else on the property is because these dog-proof traps can catch cats. Like your neighbor's cat can get in there if that's, you know, that, that's always a possibility. So to avoid that, what we like to do is put them down here where there aren't gonna be any cats or the likelihood of them at least is it down here. If we catch somebody's cat down here, it's not, it's pretty rare that a cat would be down here. I have seen them up closer to the house, but, but not here. So that shouldn't be a problem. The problem with it being down here though is it's about 10 or 15 degrees colder. The ground snow still hasn't melded here as you can see and it is a sheet of ice because it's melted, froze, melted, froze, melted, froze. And it's just a sheet of ice, real hard to walk on. Tracks aren't real good here. I did see some tracks from raccoons earlier when we were down here yesterday over there, but most of the places here, there just isn't even the ability to leave a track. It's like walking on what a uh, frozen pavement or something. So I'm sure the deer are having a hard time getting around in this. Very difficult to cross the creek even. The creek, normal, this is just a little creek, normally you can jump right across it, but it has, the water level's been up and down, up and down, and it has ice at different levels, and it's basically just a sheet of ice across. I don't know what's safe, what's not. So we had to look around yesterday to find a safe place to cross. So that's what we got. Now we're here. The traps are all along this line over here. And the reason I set them over against that line over where the hemlocks end and it goes into the swamp, the reason I did that is because, well, we do that every year because they, it seems to be that's where they move through. And we have a pretty good regular pattern of them moving through. If you remember, my hemlocks tree stand is over there. And the mock scrape is right over here that we put in down here in the hemlocks. Shot a buck here last year over there and he ran across right over to here. Um, that was in 2016 rather. You can go check that video out if you haven't seen it already. But this year when I was sitting in there, I got in there before daybreak once, one day this year, and saw raccoons coming up through here and actually picked up video of those raccoons uh, both on this camera and also on a time lapse I was doing as the sun came up. So that was pretty exciting. So hopefully we're on the right routine here. We're on the right timing. The timing will be okay and we'll have ourselves some raccoons. So let's go check it out. We're having a heck of a time getting around on this ice. It's really, really icy. I mean, it, it, we're walking on the level and if it just slopes a little bit, you slide right, your feet slide right out from under you. Uh, everything is that way. So she's checking, we, we didn't catch anything. We checked all three traps that we have set out here. She's double checking this one. Does it look like it's still set? Yeah. Is the food still there? It ate some of the food. Something ate some of the food, but the trap is not set. Is the trap still set though? Yeah. Okay. So trap is still set. What food did it eat? The dry food or the wet food? The wet. Okay. We used cat food, wet cat food, and we put dry cat food out, broadcast a little bit of that, and put a little bit of that down in, and we put a little bit of wet cat food on top. I don't like to put the wet cat food down in the trap because it freezes. When it's this cold, it'll freeze, and then that trap won't work. 
probably something came through and ate that that was not a raccoon. That's probably what happened, if I had to guess. Raccoons will inspect that. They're really curious. They will stick their hands down in there. Possums will sometimes, too, from what I'm told. I have not caught a possum. But any other animal walking through here would smell that cat food and eat it. So even a deer would probably eat the cat food. So uh, who knows? So that's where we're at. We didn't get anything today. We're going to make sure that all three of them are set, inspect them each individually, and then we'll check it again tomorrow. In case you're wondering what gear we use for this sort of thing on the Facebook page, and if you're not on the Facebook page, you should be, you should go check that out. On that Facebook page, I showed the traps, the posts that I drive into the ground, the whole trap in place, so pin it down so that a raccoon can't run off with your trap, all that good stuff. Had the hammer, the old, I still have the hammer here, but the hammer is this dude. Um, that I use to pound it in. This is also the hammer that I use to pound in the stakes for the blinds, you may have seen that. Um, this, the head of this hammer was actually my great grandfather's and uh, it just was laying around generation after generation. The handle finally broke on it, so I put a new handle on it. And you know, that's on real good, but boy, this, hand, this little hammer is perfect for that kind of stuff to carry around, leave it in the ranger when the season calls for it, all that good stuff. And we have a runner sled. Why do we have a runner sled in here? You never know when you might need it. Oh, well, that's true. You want to ride it up? No. You want me to, you want me to tie it behind the... No. The, okay. All right. No problem. That's it. Cut. Well, we did get lucky after all. Genevieve and I came down here. I didn't have high hopes because it occurred to me we're really not baiting them right the way we did last year and we have in previous years. When the traps were... Something came through last night and took a lot of the bait out of there and I thought for the most part we weren't going to have any luck because I figured that the traps were all, they weren't properly baited or they didn't have enough bait around them or anything else. Um, it's good to put something that smells down in the trap itself, okay, so that you can have some bait in the trap. And we had the dry down in there, but fortunately it worked. Look at this beautiful raccoon. This is a nice boar. Comment in the comments if you know what a raccoon is called if it is a female because it's a boar i think if it's a male but i'm not sure they call them hens sow sows i don't think they call them cows maybe they're sow raccoons i don't know I, you can look it up but i i don't know off the top of my head but anyway this is a male raccoon nice boar or whatever you want to call it and it also has a very nice blonde uh neck and upper neck area the back up here it's a little bit of blonde coloring than we're used to more more blonde than what we're used to which is awesome it'll make a nice hat really nice tail and what more can you say about this raccoon I'd say it's a couple years old it's not a not the smallest raccoon we've ever trapped about the biggest that I would eat but Genevieve wants a hat out of this she likes hats like this especially wearing outdoors in the winter that's awesome and I think this raccoon will help make an awesome hat for her so we're gonna process this that way now to do that we just freeze it I'm not actually going to skin it or anything but I'll do another video about how I am going to ship and transport and get this hat made from this raccoon. So we made it, we actually had success. We may try it again next weekend, try and get a couple to eat or something like that. Uh, so we're, there's still that possibility too. So until next time, all hail Bungie. And this is also the hammer that I used to pound in the stakes for the blinds, you may have seen that. Is my face in, does my face have a square around it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep an eye out for that. It has to be a big square around my face. What? All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Come on, facial recognition. There we go. Where can I get this? Now I'm looking right into the sun. <laughs> this, is, this is the hardest part. The hardest part of shooting a video is figuring out how to get us all in there. Here, you hold the camera. We'll just do it that way. All right, stand over here. Get where, you don't get too far away, but. I can't see. <laughs> turn, the, turn the viewfinder around. Now I have to be in it as well as the raccoon. Can you do that? Can you do it? Did we call her? No. <laughs> okay. Can I zoom out?
Yeah, you should be as far out wide as you can get. Yeah, it's as wide as it goes. Oh. It's as wide as it goes. Okay. How are you? You got it? Yeah. All right. Oh, wait, we're recording already. <laughs> it's recording. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right. Has my face got a box around it? Yeah. I'm waiting for the action. Action. <laughs> okay. Well, we did get lucky after.